Hi there, in this video, I'd like to share with you how you can instantly create some unique sound effects inside of Reaper using Effects Permutator and make the most out of the plugins that you already have, already own, and already use on a day-to-day -day basis. So with that said, let's get right into our project so I can show you what it is and what you can do with it. All right, so here we are inside of Reaper. And to load Effects Permutator, you first need to go into your extensions here, Reapack, Import Repositories. Here's where you're gonna paste your URL that you get uh, once you purchase Effects Permutator. Once you do, and you go through the installation here, um, you will be able to open up your actions here and find Effects Permutator right up here. You can run it here, and then here you have Effects Permutator, and this is uh, the script here. This is the UI. So let's have a quick look at it here, so we can be comfortable with the uh, with with the layout. So on the side here, you kind of have your your menu tab. So you have your effects collections. You have tools here that we're going to use to um, randomize some parameters in our once we run the script. We have some options. A log. This is basically an output log. Once you do run the script, it's going to tell you exactly what it did. And then you have a little about page here. All right. So let's start at the top here in our effects collections. And as you can see here, when you load it, you have a default effects collection. Um, what I'm going to do here is actually create a new collection with you here. So let's do that here. Uh, I'm going to create one with all of my kilohertz plugins. So here I have a list of all of the plugins that I own, that I have, that Reaper can see. And I just want my kilohertz all together in one collection so that I can choose those to assign to tracks. So I'm going to choose all of those here. I'm just going to add all. There you go. Now this is my kilohertz collection. So once we have our collection created here, um, uh, after that, we can go down here to our effects per track. So this is basically how many plugins is it going to put on each track. So it's going to randomly choose five different ones here. Next number of tracks that it's going to generate. So it's going to generate five new tracks, each with five plugins on them. And then how, how much percentage is it going to randomize the parameters on those tracks? So I, I want it to, to be at 100%. I want it to be completely random and, and get some cool results. Um, here you can choose what kind of randomization it's going to do. You can turn it off and have none. Uh, you can do all where it's going to randomize your presets and the parameters on the plugins. Or you can just do non-presets only. All right, so I'm going to do all because I want everything. Now I can click run. But before I do, I actually want to show you what sample we're going to start off with here. So this is the sound that I have. <laughs> So this is actually a glitchy sound that I generated with Effects Permutator. And I figured, let's bring it back in and see what else we can do. So here again, I'm just going to go back in here, select my kilohertz collection. Everything's the same here. So I'm just going to click Run here. And now we can choose to run either just the selected media item. So it's just going to copy that one selected media item onto five new tracks with five plugins on each track. Or I can select the track and have that run five effects per track with on five new tracks, all right? So if I had different media items on here, it would copy all of those onto new tracks. Uh, so right now it doesn't really matter because I only have one item. So I'm just going to select this. And you can see here, I'm, a, I'm at the output log now. It's showing me exactly what it did um, to randomize. And one of the, th of the things you'll notice here is the preset. It didn't actually choose any presets for any of these. But if I do open up uh, my effects here and I look at here, you can see that everything's been randomized. There's new, uh, all the parameters here are in random locations. They're not at their standard default settings, right? So let's just have a listen. I just turned it on here and let's have a listen to what it created for us. All right, so that's interesting. By the way, I'll just note this here. Um, everything is is being routed through in this group bus with a limiter on it. So you can see here I have a limiter. And this is just to protect really my ears just so that the sound doesn't peak too loud. Ideally, it would be on the track itself um, so that the track doesn't peak. And I also have a setting where if, if, it, if it gets too loud above a certain point, it shuts down and like mutes the track. But I can't do that because if I do, when I run effects permutator, um, it'll randomize the, the effects on the plugin, right? So I, and I don't want that. So I, right now, what I'm doing is I'm just running it through this group bus. All right, let's have a listen to another one here. And this other one here. All right, so you can get some kind of interesting results. All right, so this is interesting. You get a lot of interesting sounds, interesting ideas. Now, what makes actually FX Permutator really powerful is that you can then open up this tools 
section up here, this tools menu, and then you can start randomizing what it has already generated for you. So for example, let's go to this first track here and let's have a listen again. Right, let's say this sounds kind of cool, but actually I want to change and randomize the order of the plugins here. I can just hit shuffle effects here and you can see they're all in new order now, right? So you can change up the sound that way. Another thing you can do is randomize the parameters on the plugin. So let's say I have this here. Let's just have a look here just so you can see how it's going to change these. I'm just going to load these two, but all the parameters on each of these plugins here is going to get randomized when I click this button. Right, so hopefully you can start to see how this can get really powerful because you can shuffle the plugins around, you can randomize the, the parameters. You can also randomize the presets, but like I said, this, this certain collection doesn't actually have presets. So actually right now, why don't we do that? I'm gonna clean it all up here. So I'm gonna select clean all here. It's gonna remove everything. And let's create a new sound collection with uh, a collection that would have presets. So I'm gonna click a new collection here. Um, these are gonna be my Reaper plugins. So these are gonna be native to Reaper. So here I'm just gonna click Rhea and I'm just gonna select all of these here that are native to Reaper and I'm just gonna add them all into here. All right, so they're all in here. I removed the ones that weren't supposed to be in there. And now what we can do is the same thing as before. I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna run it, media item. And now you can see here that it's it chose certain presets because it could find the presets in there. So if we have a, list, a look at this one here, and if I just open up, let's say, Rhea Comp here, you can see it chose the preset here, male DS, right? So now what I can do is, again, same thing here. I can have a listen to what it generated. But now what's interesting is now I can randomize all the presets on the selected track that I have. So if I play it again. So if we look here, let's randomize the preset. Okay, so this one is not a good one, not a good example because that plugin didn't have a preset. Let's go to Rio Comp here and let's see here. Yeah, so you can see here I'm randomizing, randomizing the preset and you get new presets here. All right, so you can see here for this example, like I can randomize the presets, randomize the parameters, shuffle the effects around and get completely new or different sounds. So the randomized preset works great for plugins that actually have presets. But what I found was one of the, I guess, disappointing things or the biggest downfalls of this, uh, of effects permutator here is that actually most plugins don't have presets. And Tech Audio did come up with a solution for that. So let me show you that right now. So on their website here at techaud.io, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom here and click on preset repository. And here they have a whole bunch of companies, uh, uh, presets from different companies and plugins that they have that they've created and packaged up for you so that you can just, uh, let's say you have unfiltered audio stuff, right? Let's say I have Silo, which I actually do have. You can click on this, you can download it, right? So now it's gonna download. And what I can do now is, let's say I wanted to load Silo on here. Once I'm here, so Silo doesn't have any presets in this menu. So I can go here in the plus um, icon here, I can go import preset library. So now if I go to my downloads here, you can see I already have it here and you can see I downloaded quite a few other ones uh, yesterday to import into my sound. So I can import it here like this and I don't wanna import it right now because I've already actually done it. And if you see here, now you can see all of the presets are actually in here. So now this plugin will be able to randomize the presets. Now. Obviously, this is a lot of work if you have a lot of plugins because most plugins, actually all plugins, don't have any presets on them. So for example, if I go to like Thermal here by Output, guess what, look, I have no presets in here. And look in here, I have hundreds of presets in my plugin, but they can't be used because uh, FX Permutator can't find it. And the other downside is that it's nice that they have this kind of repository where you can download and, and upload you know, presets that are gonna be found by FX Permutator, but not not everything is in here. Like for example, there's nothing by output in here. So I have no way of doing it unless I do it manually. And there is a way to do it manually, but it's a lot of work. I haven't, I haven't found out a way to do it where it's not a lot of work. So basically what you could do and what I did do, and I spent a lot of time doing this, is that there, there are certain scripts that are written where you can choose a preset like this and then run a script where it'll automatically add it to uh, as a preset in here, right? So every time you click on a new, based on your last touch parameters, it's gonna add that as a preset. So I can click on each of these and add it as a preset, but I have to manually go through hundreds of presets for each and every individual plugin that I have to be able to do that so that I can use that effect. So I think that's one of the biggest downfalls of this plugin. And I, I don't know if there's a way around it. I don't know if there's um, if there's some, something in the works where they can fix that or, or what, but um, yeah, it, it's a really big downfall because it could be so much more powerful if every single plugin that I had, I could use all the presets that are part of the plugins, right? So like, imagine like everything in Thermal, everything in like, for example, Melda Productions, you know, um, they, they have some that are already chosen, but not everything. Like if I go into my frequency shifter here, like 
and if I go into the presets, like there's a lot of presets in here, but not everything can be used, right? So again, I, I think this is probably the biggest downfall and, and the biggest thing. I, I, f I feel like I wish they were more upfront about, about it on their, on their page. Um, how about how you, you really can't use it for most third-party plugins. Like it's, it's great that they have a little repository where they have some of them uh, made available, but not everything is. So uh, just be aware of that because that is a, a really big thing for uh, effects permutator here. All right, so now that we've talked about that, there are a few other improvements that I want to mention just so that you're aware of. And I think that could make the plugin, I think, a little bit better. Like I mentioned, obviously, is one is having a limiter on, on the end of the track that affects permutator basically doesn't affect when I randomizing the parameters and stuff. That'd be nice just so that the, the volume doesn't explode in your face. All right, another thing is, let's say I have a collection here that I really like. Um, I'm going to use, let's say I have granular. So I have a few granular plugins here. I'm just going to run the script here. All right, so... Here, let's say I have a sound here that I really like. Let's say I like this, this effect chain here. All right, so let's say I find that's like a really cool effects chain. I want to keep that to be able to apply it and load it later. You can actually do that here when you click Save Effects Chain. And you can say Save Selected. So I can save this actual track, Save Selected. So now the effect chain is saved. Let's say I want to go in here and load my effects chains. Um, you can see here that it's loaded right here. It's this one right here. So it's great that you can actually save it, but the issue is that the name of it is kind of poor, <laughs> if you will. So in the options here, you actually are able to change the how you, how you want it to be saved. So here you can put a prefix if you want a prefix. You can choose your file path where it's going to be saved, uh, but you don't have any options as to how it's going to be saved or what's going to be put in the effect name uh, or how it's going to be, like what the name is going to be. So I can just the prefix and that's it, which is fine. But it'd be nice to have somewhere where you can include like the plugins that are included or even like a, a just a short form version of the, which plugins are included or even how many plugins are included or like just give me an idea of what is actually going to be on this effects chain. Like right now I have no idea what it is. So it's kind of useless. Like I still have to go back, come back in here and then rename the effect anyways. Like my, it'd be nice if there was a, a few more options in here where I can actually clearly label what my, uh, my, what my, effects chain is or like what's on it or how many plugins are on it or like what's the what's the group what's the effect collection that's on it right so it'd be nice to have those kinds of options when i'm reading my my, my uh, effects chain so another thing that would be really nice to improve for effects permutator here is to have a, so right now we have a, a filter for the available uh, plugins here it'd also be nice to have a filter for the plugins in our effects here so let's say i have a large collection like let's say i want all of all of my plugins or all of my, what I labeled here, all my usable plugins. Cause some of them are just like oscilloscopes and stuff like that that are not really for sound design, right? So it's nice to have this massive list here that I can choose from and it'll basically like, I have no idea what's gonna come out of it, right? So this is great, but then what'll happen sometimes is I'll have a list of five plugins here and one of them is not the one that I want in my uh, on my list. So sometimes I have to come back in here, uh, select my list here, my collection, and actually try to find the one plugin. So let's say it was like Portal. Well, now I have to go in here and try to find Portal. So like PPP, where is P? Uh, I don't see Portal on here. Where Elemento P? Okay, Portal. So now I have to come all, all the way down here. Now I can find Portal and then remove it, right? So it'd be nice to just I have a quick filter. I can just type it up and there it is, right? I don't have to guess. Like, yes, it's an alphabetical order. And yes, you also have the the, the company name on the sides here, but it's, it's still, it would just be nice and a lot more time efficient for me if I had another filter here where I could choose, uh, type in the sounds for plugins that I want to remove really quickly, especially for large collections like this. All right, another thing that I just noticed here that I would love to see improved here is in the tools, I would love to have another box here that is for swapping out the plugins that are already in this list here. So let's say I have... For example, this list here, and I listen to my sound here. Testing effects permutator. Sounds fine. Let's say I randomize the presets. Testing effects permutator. It's okay, but let's say it's not testing effects permutator. It's not the it's, it's not the, the plugins I want. I, I want new effects from my selected collection. So my collection here was supposed to be a kilohertz collection. I don't know how these got in there. So from the selected collection that I already ran when I ran the script, I'd love to have a button here where I can just click and change out these these plugins to have three new plugins for uh, this specific track that I've selected here, right? So it, it'd just be nice to have that because let's say I have all, they're just like all compressors or something like that. They're, it's not exactly what I wanted. I wanted something more f changing in pitch or frequency or whatever it is. I just want to, I want to try different plugins. Well, I can't really do that. So I kind of have to like scrap this entire track and like rerun the script or something like that. But it'd be nice where if I didn't have to do that, where I can just press a button, it swaps out these three with three new ones where I can just, again, try out the random, randomizing different parameters and presets etc. and keep going that way. Now there is another thing I want to show you because it does affect how you use effects permutator. All right, so let's say I have this effect here and I want to start randomizing some of the parameters here. So especially for like, let's say portal. All right, so I have portal here. I want to start randomizing the parameters here. So I'm just going to randomize that and you can see everything's getting randomized. 
Now, one of the, th the issues that you might notice here, if you have a really keen eye, is that when I randomize the parameters here, it's also randomizing the input of the sound here. And if I do that, and the input is all the way down at zero, I'm basically gonna get no sound coming in or out of this plugin, right? Like it's gonna be so little that you won't actually hear it. So if you don't want effects permutator to change or touch uh, a certain parameter, what you can do inside of options here, randomization, is you can actually put in what parameters you don't want it to touch. So you can restrict some, some effect parameter name. So here I'm gonna put input so that it doesn't change it. But you can also do the same thing for like volume gain, et cetera. So basically your volume will stay consistent, hopefully throughout um, the effects chain. And another minor thing, sometimes uh, I have had it happen to me before where let's say I have uh, certain effects here that I've loaded like this and I'm here. You do have to make sure that you have your track selected. And then if I randomize the parameter, you can see here everything's getting randomized. What I have happened before is that sometimes I click on this and nothing actually happens with the effects. And what I have to do is actually just like shut it down and then like I have to restart it. It doesn't happen often, but just so you're aware of it, it might happen where just for some reason it's not connecting and then you just have to restart it and then you should be good to go. All right, so I hope you found that useful and valuable. At the time of making this video, it is on sale for $29.99 on the Tech Audio website. And I just wanna say I was not sponsored to make this video or anything. I bought it with my own money and wanted to make this video because I think it's really cool. I want to share with you guys and I really hope that they actually take some of the advice I put in this video and to implement into uh, changing up and updating their software because I think it could be really powerful and really useful, especially for sound designers. So with that said, if you wanna see another video about other Reaper scripts, I'll put it up on the screen right now. And thanks so much for watching all the way through to the end. If you have a comments question, leave it below. And if not, I'll see you in the next video.